for a new episode. As promised, every episode, 35 different industries, talking about the challenges, the hardships, and the opportunities. Uh, today, we've, we're going to talk taxes. We're going to talk stimulus payments, and we're going to talk with an expert tax and CPA and accounting expert. Reggie, thank you for joining us today. Oh, awesome. Thank you for having me, Gabe. No problem. And we got a great lineup this afternoon. We're going to talk about reopening from a doctor's, from a medical doctor's perspective. Then we're going to talk about don'ts, things you don't want to do uh, in social media. We also have planning and a little bling bling with uh, Shaftel Diamonds is going to tell us about diamonds and gold and uh, what to do with that. Uh, so we got a full lineup. Uh, we'll even talk about listening to your pets and like really finding that balance and then sustainable gardening. So tune in to Expert 35. But let's talk about money and let's talk about taxes because that's what we're here to do today. Uh, Reggie, man, you've got decades of experience. You've been in this industry for a long time. What uh, What is changing right now? Tell us a little bit about you. Well, thanks for having me first of all. And uh, what's changing in our industry is, is everything. The coronavirus, I think, has touched everything from you know uh, barbers and nail salons all the way to airplane pilots, everyone in between. There's... Um, the uh, legislation by the government to kind of ease the pain for everyone. Um, we've all heard of the CARES Act. Uh, the question mm -hmm. is, how, do, how does it impact people? And uh, the first and foremost, everyone should be getting their uh, stimulus checks if they qualify for it. And uh, that's what everyone's tuned in because that's the that's the most immediate thing. That's, that's yeah. where you get some cash. People are like, when am I getting my check? Now, some people already got it, right? Some people right. are getting it in the mail. Some people got direct deposit. So... You know, exactly right. they're, but yeah. they're still in the mail, right? Like it's that, that's not a thing. That's not like when you tell the guy, hey, checks in the mail. But like it really is right. Come it should be. Yeah. I mean, this is the government we're talking about. But yeah, if, they, if it's if it's in the mail, it should get to you. The, um, mm -hmm. the thing is, if they have your bank information for 18 or 19 returns, you're going to get that in your uh, as a direct deposit. So it won't come in the mail to hit your bank. So be watching your statements. Right. Uh, the uh, the big question we get is, do I qualify? And I think sure. that's um, that that's a big question. There's a lot of confusion out there. It's a, do I make too much? Do I make too little? What happens if I have kids? So if you have um, the graphic that you can pull up for stimulus checks. Yeah, absolutely. There it is. So there we go. You get um, a, a nice big round numbers. You get twelve hundred if you're if you're single, twenty four hundred if you're married, filing joint filing a joint return. And then you're going to get a little extra bump if you have some kiddos. Now, before we jump all deep into it, we can, there's a lot of loopholes, a lot of things that we're going to be talking about today. So Reggie, text EXPERT04 and you'll get direct access to some of the resources. Uh, you know, Again, he is a certified CPA in Texas. The other thing is we'll put resources in the comments because, again, some of this gets much more complicated. Otherwise, it wouldn't be CPAs and there wouldn't be all these tools and softwares to help us. So we really appreciate uh, you guys joining us. Uh, Reggie. Now, I just want to give a quick disclaimer and let him know that you will be putting comments in there so we don't get too, uh, too deep into it. Uh, what, uh, you want me to put in the next, the next graphic on the stimulus? Yeah, let's go for it. The, the next um, graphic should be a little bit further breakdown. It's, uh, it's, it goes into some of the thresholds. And the uh, 1200 is what you'll get if you hit the sweet spot. If you hit the sweet spot in the income curve, if you make over uh, ninety nine thousand as a single or two, right at two hundred for a married filing joint return, you're you're out of luck. You won't get the stimulus. So there, and of course, there's lots of caveats and uh, and things like that. I was um, I always tell clients that my favorite answer to a tax question starts with, well, it depends. It depends on your unique situation. Everyone's a little different forms are the same all the way across the country, but what you put on them is, uh, is, is, is where the magic happens. That's what's different about it. I've got a great question from Jennifer Johnson is, do you have to repay the stimulus money? No, you do not. If you, if, if you do not get it in error, you don't. It's uh, <laughs> a good answer. <laughs> if you get it and shouldn't have got it, then yeah, you're going to have to send it back. But, uh, but no, what that, what it is essentially is, is a future credit that's on the books. It's in the code, um, the internal revenue code, but it's not on any forms yet. So whenever you file 2020s return, there's going to be an extra line on there for um, stimulus credit. And if you get if you got a payment in you know now, then you've gotten an advance on that credit. It's not taxable income, and you don't have to pay it back. 
Excellent. All right. So here's what, you know, we're one of the big pieces is this whole CARES Act, right? How are we impacted beyond these stimulus checks? How are businesses impacted? Well, bi uh, businesses are the, um, the uh, main people that are there. B businesses is why the thing was enacted to begin with. Mm -hmm. There's uh, there, the immediate need is for people to continue working and businesses to maintain their cash flow to, to continue to have employees. And so the big component that everyone knows about right off the bat is the payroll protection program. Yeah. And that was guaranteed by the SBA launched in late March. And, you know, as soon as it was launched, there's been, you know, confusion and clarification and further clarifications. It's just been a, a, a fiasco from... It, it, it's intended to help like everything is, but good intentions don't always get it done. So there's been uh, there's been some pretty significant bumps in the road on, in it. Right. And we've had some of the other experts actually talk about, man, you know, some of it requires certain days to ramp up and certain pieces. And they're just like, man, we, we just we don't see some of these dates being hit. Do you, you think there's gonna, there's an opportunity to push those dates back? There could be. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. um, that's something else to mention. I mean, everyone knows the April 15th deadline was pushed to July for mm -hmm. most types of returns, just about everything, including uh, including estimated tax payments. So if you had one in April or June, that's all bumped back to July now. Well, and very timely question again, do you think they will extend the filing deadline again? We, we have uh, heard rumblings about that. And, and of course, you, by the time we hear rumblings on a lot of things, that means things are in the work and they're kind of laying the groundwork and putting their feelers out. But we've heard some of that. And that'll be interesting if they uh, do what they're considering doing, which is extending the deadline all the way out to September or even December. I mean, that's that's crazy. There's you know, you go a year without filing a return or paying tax. Mm -hmm. um, the that that's OK for 2019. But the question is for 2020, you know, business is still happening in theory. And so tax is still owed. You're creating a tax liability for yourself. So if you haven't filed 19s return all the way until December of 2020, what about 2020's liability? Right. That's, that's almost like a tax-free loan, but it, but you still owe it. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're eventually. Interest -free loan. Yeah, no, and that's super loan. important, right? Let's be very clear is that these extensions aren't you know, it doesn't mean that we're not filing and paying taxes now. If you're if done a W-2, that's easy, right? Because theoretically, if you filled out your form right, you should be paying taxes from your, you know, for your employers paying your taxes. That's right. right. Every couple of weeks. Every couple of weeks you're paying taxes. You earn it. That's nice and easy. Um, it mm -hmm. gets a little tricky if you're a, a business owner or self-employed and right. your, your tax situation is a moving target. And you really, on a best guess estimate, you know, some kind of educational or uh, educated guess or estimate. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's the question. You know, if you have money coming in, you need to be setting some aside for taxes. Well, OK, you should be doing that. But in light of the uncertainty, you got to pay bills and keep employees, you know, on deck and ready to go. So that's it's going to be tricky. Exactly. And I think one of the things that we need to talk about, too, is the there's 26 million plus people unemployed, meaning they're now contractors. Right. By definition, they're going to start doing work. And so there's going to be this push. I see it where there's so many DBAs being formed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's nonstop. Uh, the guy's got, oh, I got, a, you know, I've got a truck. I'm going to start doing deliveries. Or I'm going to start doing, you know, some sort of handyman work, uh, you know, anything that that is considered a service that they can offer right now. But they may not understand that the implications of what that means, because no longer are they being withheld on their taxes. And now they have that liability, you know, tacked onto themselves. Right. Yep. That's huge. That is huge. And it's always a big uh, adjustment for someone who has been a W-2 employee. Mm -hmm. Every couple of weeks, they've got their federal income tax withheld, Social Security, Medicare. Well, whenever you're self-employed, you're the employee, you're the employer. So you got to match both sides of that payroll tax. And uh, right. if you're not prepared for it, it'll get you. Uh, oh, for sure. So that's important. Let's talk about what can we do now? Like what can families and businesses, because now, you know, what can we do with this extra time? What are things that, that, uh, that you recommend? And I think we already just started touching it. It's like, hey, you know. Start thinking about your taxes. Well, yeah, yeah. At least I mean, keep it keep it in mind. If um, if you do find yourself with some downtime just due to your employer taking a taking a break, putting you on a um, work remotely schedule, that's that's fine. You're still employed. Uh, your employment or employee status hasn't changed, but mm -hmm. 
the uh, I mean, you could be gathering your documents for your CPA. Uh, just because we get a filing extension doesn't mean we need to take it. There's always a log jam at deadline times. Uh, it's in human nature being what it is. Everyone takes takes their time right. and, and waits to the last minute to get it. Um, but and we don't have those resources either. Right? You're not going to have the H and R blocks that we can just walk into. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. If we're supposed to be social distancing and following the uh, letter of the law, then those types of places are not going to be full and taking as many customers and clients as, as they normally do. And they do a bulk of the returns. In, we, yeah. In so the you kind of think about it. You throw a rock, there's a, there's an HR block in every like corner where I, you know, where we live in River Oaks. So they, t- they've got to take on 80, 90%. And if those aren't available, everybody's going online or, or they're just, I mean, it's going to be a mess. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, it is a mess. And I think we'll be picking up the pieces for a couple of years, at least, at least this year. And then on into next year, but you're exactly right. I don't know what the what the precise percentage is, but those H and R Block, Walk In Tax Services, Liberty Tax, those guys, they do the bulk of tax returns in the country. Uh, and then if if you're adventurous, you might get a little TurboTax. You might download that and take a stab at it yourself. And what we do sure. we we do a ton of tax returns in our offices. There's firms our size, and even you know bigger, of course, and and smaller, of course, too. Right. Uh, but the number of returns we do is a drop in the bucket to the entire country. Right. And another thing that we talked about offline is like, this is a time to really kind of reassess because their laws are changing and go ahead and talk to a CPA before you commit a change in your taxes. If something big has changed to go talk to someone, right? Cause like that's almost, you're, you're like the insurance policy It's like, no, no, you can do this. You may want to do this and you may even find better ways to save money or, you know, spread the payments out so that it's something they can handle. Right. Yeah. I, I, I always say that. Call me before you do, uh, before, b- before you do anything significant. If you have a big event in your life, if you change jobs, move jobs, become self-employed, just give, give me a buzz or give your CPA a buzz. Um, you need to be asking those questions uh, before things get out of hand as they happen, rather than trying to pick up the pieces next year when you've got a massive liability that you're, uh, that you're trying to clear up the, right. uh, the and, and it's just like you alluded to someone who's going from a W2 status to being self-employed. That's a big change. And uh, there's going to be some implications there. And if you don't have a uh, relationship with your CPA, it's time to uh, time to recess it, time to think about it, uh, get them on the phone, see uh, if, if you're getting the level of service that you need or would like. And, uh, and, and, and use them. I mean, that's your, they're charging you and you're, and you're paying for a service. Make sure you're use, make sure they're earning it. I've got a great question. Actually, this is interesting. There's a little off uh, a different side of it. What about a 401k loan? What happens to it if I lose my job? Yeah, there's, that's a, another little caveat in the, in the CARES Act. And, uh, they they've softened some of the, um, regulations with regard to loans from retirement plans, 401ks included. Um, it can get complicated, but the, uh, the main idea is there, there, there are changes and it's softened. It's not as punitive as it, as it was last year, six months ago. It's uh, sure. a better situation. Well, that's good. And obviously everybody's asking, how long is it going to take to get my refund? <laughs> I'm going to throw that one on there. <laughs> well, the refund, if you had a refund on 2019's return, it should be on, um, you know, normal timetables. It should be between seven to 20 days or so to get a mm-hmm. uh, electronic deposit into your bank account. Sometimes they take longer just for IRS reasons. It is a government agency. You know, they're not known for being the most uh, efficient, but getting a pay, if you don't, if you're not getting a direct deposit, the, uh, the paper checks always take a long time and yeah. that just, it's, it, the, the wheels just turn very slowly. So I, I would encourage you to to, to jump into that. A lot of people don't mind, um, you know, paying bills on, online and having uh, a, a lot of electronic banking happening. But whenever it comes to the IRS, they don't want any. Yes. Do not look at my bank, you know, Uncle Sam. And I, I get that to some extent, but it really speeds up the process as far as um, your refunds, things like that. Perfect. Now, my favorite part of the show, three things we should be doing right now that we can do. Go. What are those three things? Okay, number one, if you're at home with more time on your hands, get your tax documents together. I mentioned it a little bit earlier. Go ahead and get them to your CPA. That's always huge. Um, it, it, it helps you out to get your money quicker. It helps the CPA so he's not working 
till midnight putting returns together. Um, if you're a business owner, then you want to be looking at all your accounting records. If you've applied for the uh, PPP loan and received funds or been put on hold with that, you need to be working with your banker and your CPA included kind of as a, as a, as a team and putting your accounting records together, making sure you've got all the documents, all your ducks in a row for forgiveness. Perfect. And so timely, right? Obviously, you know, a lot of people have questions about the, the PPP loans and, uh, you know, this whole stimulus section. We got more questions. People are like, when am I getting my stimulus checks? So, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. If you, again, if you, if, you had, if you had your bank information in there, routing an account number, you should get it pretty quick. Um, they, they issued them out. I think they do them alphabetical order. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's what they say, but you hear stories about yeah. other things happening. Um, but if you didn't have bank information, you get a paper check from them normally on a refund. It's going to take a while. It, right. just, it just is. Right. And I actually, I got a paper one. So no, so, so timely. Obviously, I, I think one of the things that's important is just get organized. Yeah. Right. Excel is organized. And so, you know, I've, I used, um, you know, QuickBooks, Excel before I use QuickBooks and use TurboTax. Obviously, now I use a CPA because, you know, Reggie's amazing. So <laughs> it's, it's really interesting having that whole support. And every time, uh, it, it's part of that conversation, right? And it's important to tell people like the conversation is free. Like you, you, you should talk. You, we should treat CPAs as like a partner in our business, right? Yeah, oh yeah. That's that's what I say all the time. I mean, call me first if you've got something going on. Let's at least have a chat about it. And uh, you, you know, it's you, you can always take care of things in front of you rather than the rearview mirror. And uh, getting organized, like you said, if you uh, if you're one of those people who who did happen to become furloughed or laid off and you're now a self-employed person, put all, get organized. Like you mm -hmm. said, put it together, start using Excel, uh, possibly even QuickBooks. Excel can do what you need. It can split a lot of hairs for you. It's a powerful program. Um, but get that stuff organized, get in front of it. And, um, there's it, a CPA should be your partner. So I mean, if you get, if you're, uh, you know, if you're looking for legal advice, first person you're going to call is your attorney. If you're looking for financial advice, um, tax and accounting wise, call your CPA. Reggie, thank you so much for being on the show. Super timely. Great advice. Good. Glad to be here. This is awesome. Text expert04 to the number on the screen. You'll get direct access to Reggie. He has some resources. We're going to let him go on to the actual chat. We're going to put some links because there's a lot of links we didn't even have time to get to. We'll put some of those links and resources uh, to better understand uh, the, the CARE Act, understand some of the resources that are available. Uh, there's tools that will help you file if you have a really simple return, right? And what, we, what did you consider a simple return? That's a, probably a really good way to end the full circle. Okay. Simple return. That's going to be, uh, we call them W2 and a house employees. If you, you work, your wife works, y'all own a house, you got like three tax documents. That's pretty simple. You can, uh, you can get that done. TurboTax, you can probably take a stab at it, do it yourself. To me, if it gets beyond that, um, if you have some investment property, you inherited a, a, a house from your grandma who might've passed or something like that, then it can get a little sticky. Um, you might want to seek some professional advice, but a simple return, two, three documents, W2, you own a house, you know, that, that's, that's pretty basic. Perfect. Thank you so much again for being on the show. I uh, would love to have you back. Obviously things are going to be changing and there's going to be a lot of questions, but thank you for being on expert 35, Reggie. Yes. Thank you very much, Gabe. Have a good one. All right. See you soon. Okay. All right. We're going to leave the uh, stimulus payment graphic up. And again, if, uh, if you guys have any questions, Reggie's happy to jump on there. He's going to start answering questions on expert 35 on the live feed. Uh, we'd love to see you guys come back soon. Uh, we've got tomorrow, or actually later on today, we've got a um, medical doctor on how to get back to work. Uh, we've got ideas on selling your, your gold and your silver. We're also going to talk about planning. We're going to talk about you know all the different aspects of our lives uh, that we're here to help you with. Again, Expert 35 is here to help. We uh, we'll see you guys soon. Thank times. you. We collaborate at Expert 35. 35. This is for a better tomorrow and a better today. Let's come together and together we will find a way. You got questions, we got solutions. solutions. You got problems, we got resolutions. resolutions. Visit expert35.com. No need to worry, just remain calm. remain calm. No more pain, no more sorrows. We provide solutions for a better tomorrow. tomorrow. No more pain, no more